what is up people welcome back to blue chip prospect for another scouting report today we're going to be taking a deeper look at mr berkeley Catton. just before we jump to the video I asked in my last scouting report if you guys were interested to see a mid-season ranking and everyone who answered said yes so it isn't what I could call like production but one thing though is that I said I could probably put it together quickly to make it happen and that was a flat-out lie <laughs> I cannot do anything quickly with those videos they all take an absurd amount of time to make so obviously putting together a video with 32 players in a reasonable amount of time for me is basically impossible when I did my top 32 at the end of last season it was a series of three videos that range anywhere between 20 something minutes to 30 something minutes so since i can't get on a project like that in the middle of the season while trying to get scouting reports out at the same time i decided that i will make that top 30 video in a pod guy style if you'd like i'll give my rankings and talk about each players but i won't be putting any highlights or stuff like this on the screen i'll keep i'll be keeping this project at the end of the year so just me talking basically if you're interested in my opinion and ranking it's coming up in the next couple of days or maybe next week or something like that anyways just wanted to give you a heads up on it enough chit chatting and without further ado let's get this started right away so who's that berkeley captain guy Berkeley is a prospect that's been coming up for many years. He's a 5'11", 163 pounds guy from Saskatoon. He just turned 18 a couple of weeks ago, so not on the old or the young side, pretty much somewhere in the middle. As for the rankings, I don't know if I'm crazy or anything, but I feel like he's been falling a bit, which kind of brings hope and warmth to my heart that maybe he could be available when the Habs step on the stage. But anyway, in Bob's McKenzie ranking, which is more like a poll of different NHL scouts he's at number 10 central scouting has him number ninth uh the ninth skater on their north american list and button has him at 13 i can assure you that we haven't watched the same game because he's a fantastic playmaker he's a competitive he skates well he skates really really well actually he has the vision to see every play develop and he has the skill to act on it i don't know to me he's a top tier talent without the flash that often comes with top tier talent anyway others like smart scouting and hockey news have him at number four and that is more in line with what i think in terms of stats he started the year on fire by being the best player at the helinka gritsky and he's following that up by being the most productive draft eligible player in the whl and if i filter it out by draft eligible players since the 2000 2001 season he's basically equal to zach benson logan stankoven seth jarvis and leon Dr dreisaitl if we put dreisaitl aside for a minute because obviously uh, we can't expect that it's still a very decent list of player to be mixed with Jarvis is one of the best player on Carolina Benson is in the NHL as an undersized 18 year old and putting up very decent numbers and making the highlight reels Stankoven is destroying the AHL and everything points toward that as being accused of theft in the draft once more when the number supports what you see on the ice, it's hard not to get excited. So, as you can see here, I like him quite a lot. Catton is an elite passer in my opinion, and I might be higher than most on this, or maybe even higher than everyone, but I stand by it, and anyway, I will explain myself later. He combines that with high-end but not flashy handling, high-end skating, and high-end hockey sense. He's a competitive but not physical player, so giving his willingness to work hard but lack of physicality, I gave him an above average grade and the same with his shot. His shot is the element of his game that I'm not sure if I have a good grasp on it but he scores a lot of goal and you'll be able to make your own opinion later in the video so anyways let's roll the clips. Captain skating starts with a very fluid and mechanically sound stride. When you look at him go, it looks effortless and almost sometimes look elegant. Some players have this ability to just fly over the ice with just a few smooth strides and Captain is one of them. Sometimes it looks like he went from the D zone to the O zone with like three strides overall. He's not necessarily blazing fast on his skates, but he also never really seemed like he's at full speed don't get me wrong he's definitely above average in terms of speed but the reason i have him at high end is because he combines his edges really well with his speed he's very agile on his feet and he uses them a lot to send mixed signals i wouldn't say he uses stutters in his steps like elaine hudson or andrew crystal to give an example but he creates misdirections by slowing down a stride or two or by creating like 
hesitations in a stride for lack of better word. As a defender, you'd want to match his speed and block the center of the ice, forcing him to the outside, but he's very hard to match because of those little variations. Basically, in transition, he's unstoppable at the junior level, and if he has the puck on his stick, his team is going to gain the zone, there's just no way around it. Combine all this with an explosive stride to catch player off guard in like two or three steps and the cardio of an Ironman runner, <laughs> you get an attribute that will be a strong advantage at the NHL level. You should see that guy when he defends a PK. It looks ex like exactly like what I do when I play NHL, but I don't care if I have to spend two minutes on the ice after chasing you down like a madman in your own zone. It's a game. Catton does the exact same. He hunts players down on the PK, then defends his own zone the whole power play, and he still has the juice to go on a breakaway by the end of it. Catton will do Catton things. When it comes to hockey sense, this guy understands hockey like the best of them. I wouldn't call him an instinctual player like, you know, when you watch a player and it's clear that he is reacting to whatever is being presented to him. Take a player like Pasternak, for example. Whenever I watch him, he looks like he's playing hockey on reactions instead of planning, but equipped with some of the best awareness in the game and the skills to match it, he's one of the most dangerous players out there. You compare that to another winger like Kucherov, for example, every move, every play seems well thought out. Plays seems to happen one way because Kucherov built them that way. And with the skills to match his mind, he's another one of the most dangerous players out there, but completely different to Pasternak. Well, all this to say that Katten is a lot closer to what Kucherov does than what Pasternak does in the way that he creates offense. Everything seems intentional and pre-planned. Just the way he receives every pass, it's like he, all, he already knew it was coming at this instant. His body and his stick is placed in a way to make sure that the puck is out of reach for the defender so he can make something happen with one or two touches. For example, if he receives the puck from his right, let's say, and he's covered somewhere between the dots, instead of receiving it on his forehand and toe drag the puck around cover or place it under sticks to then make a pass by bringing his arms across his body, he will receive it with his arms already across his body so it can be redirected to an open player with one or two touches. It's really just a touch and go. That's a small example, but his whole game is like that. Everything is made in a way to prevent overhandling or being stuck in a vulnerable situation. Overall, I think Catton has one of the best hockey minds in this draft. He's always at the right place and at the right time. Offensively, his game on the puck as well as off the puck are just as good. I can't really see a weakness in the way he thinks the game. He's not a junior player. He thinks the game like, an, like NHL players do. And before we jump to the next part, please take the time to like and subscribe. It really makes my mom proud in it. And it gives me the strength to keep going. No, but honestly, it really helps the channel and it helps me. So please do it. Thanks. When it comes to handling, it's funny that for a guy that I gave a high-end grade, I have like six clips for this section of the video and I'm kind of stretching it. He's not a high-end stake handler in any way that I that's easy to put in a video, at least not in the games that I've clipped. And I've watched like all of the Elinka Gretzky this summer. I watched about half a dozen games this season, watched a top prospect game, clipped three other games, and I don't have many memories or of play where I was left speechless. Take Will Smith or Demidov, for example, and it's basically every game. I even watched a game against the Tigers from early January and I did that yesterday and I was mesmerized by Gavin McKenna handling the puck. Captain, it's different and let me explain. The puck when it's on his stick, it's glued to it. It's not moving out of it unless he says so. He doesn't overhand all the puck and he doesn't try to be flashy. He always used the right dosage of handle to keep the puck away while keeping his speed. He's, his only intentions are always to create scoring chances. That's it. And that... And like I talk in the hockey sense section of the video, he's a magnificent one or two touch puck distributor. It's fast, it's precise, and it's smooth like butter. Uh, and on one thing that's quite impressive also is and I'm not sure how to call it, maybe his area of effectiveness, maybe, the guy can handle the puck just as smoothly and just as precisely with his arms completely extended and with the puck on the toe of his blade as he can do when he's in full control of his stick. But overall, he's a fantastic handler without showing much flash in his handling of the puck.
Katten is a very competitive player, but not competitive in the physical way. He obviously doesn't have the frame to be a physical player, but it doesn't stop him from competing hard in other areas. On, on offense, he plays between the dots as much as any other players. He has a bit of that fearless attitude that I like so much from players like Jarvis or Nick Robertson. He's always driving the middle and trying to make plays in there or to there. And he's hard to box out because he He's so light on his skate and such a good handler that even the best defenseman in the WHL can't keep can keep him from making plays in the high and low slot. He also finishes all his routes to the net and races for the puck retrieval on the boards or in the corners. There's there's a but though <laughs> he competes hard for pucks but i don't find him to be very effective he doesn't really try to gain an advantage by gaining body positioning or placing his hips in front of the other player or at least block the player's legs he counts on his stick and his hands to do all the work which is isn't optimal i would say but nonetheless he works hard to keep the plays alive in the offensive zone Defensively, he tracks backs on turnovers and back checks. He's not lazy, but he isn't consistent in his own zone. At 5v5, some nights he's all over his player, baiting him with his stick down just to catch the puck on the other side or blocking every lane like his life depended on it, but some night he's just gliding and watching. If he's capable of playing like the first guy with consistency, you gotta watch out, because a player that offensively gifted shouldn't be this good defensively. And man, like I said, and like I glanced over a little bit earlier, the guy on the PK is a real big threat. I don't remember the last player that I've seen being this aggressive on the PK. He's more trouble for the team on the power play than the power play is trouble for his team. He doesn't give an inch of space, he anticipates passes as well as I've seen and create tons of misplay. And if the puck gets out, he will hunt you down all the way to the other side behind your goalie, he will make you do a mistake, he will take that puck from you and he will score is really something to watch passing is his bread and butter if we forget about celebrini for a minute i think he's one of the best passer in this draft with Connolly and demidov but the thing with Canton is that there's nothing missing in his passing game the puck skills are off the chart he can zing it to anywhere and from anywhere flat and on the tape his passes are absolutely beautiful they look like the easiest pass to receive just put your stick down and it'll reach it. I find that while watching junior players around the world, everyone can sauce a pass with precision if given enough time and space, but some might fall flat too fast, some might come too hard and you'll need to bat it down, some might not make it past the stick or the leg they were intended to jump over. His are always perfect, the puck skills are flawless and what's even more impressive is that he can dish those precise passes with just the right amount of air under and just the right amount of weight on it while pushing the pace. He's very versatile in the sense that he's just as good a playmaker on the rush and pushing the pace or while setting up in the offensive zone and slowing things down. But it's not just the puck skills, it's also his amazing offensive brain. When you watch him play with the camera angles, you can often see the space he's creating live before he sends the puck to the open player. He can create so much chaos in the offensive zone for the other team, he, he just understands how to move players around and make them miss their coverage. And when the defensive coverage isn't breaking down by moving around or by moving in and out with the puck to attract double coverage, he uses his skating and his hands to show fake and intentions, creating lanes that way and making sure players are half a second behind the play, giving time to his teammates, teammates to do something. We can also add to his puck skills and his elite playmaking mind his exceptional vision. I haven't seen as many games as I did with Catton of other IM playmaker outside of Celebrini, but as of right now, Catton has the best vision in the draft for me. It's incredible. He can see plays and lane that very few players would would see or even think to attack. It's and it's not it's not all, it's not just, he's not just a fabulous chance creator, he's an elite high danger chance creator. At 5v5, when he's not between the dots, you can bet your house that's where the puck is going. It's crazy the amount of passes right on tape he can send to the low and high slot. Even when out, outnumber or pinned against the board or reaching for the puck with his arms completely extended, he somehow still finds a way to dish it cleanly 
to an open player between the circles. Overall, he's got the vision, he's got the puck skills, he's got the mind to create space and fake intention, he's got the pass to the slot per 60 skill through the roof. I can't understand why he's slipping back a little bit in different ranking, he's an elite playmaker in my opinion. When it comes to his shot, I know it's good enough, but I'm just not that sold on it. Look, the guy can't stop scoring, so he's definitely a good shooter, but I think it has more to do with where he shoots from than the quality of the shot itself. On so many shots, he will just carry the puck to the middle of the ice before shooting. I, I don't see him sending many wristers from the perimeter that much, it's not really his style of play anyway. He does shoot from the perimeter sometimes though, but on the one-timer, and again, it doesn't seem like an explosive or heavy shot that much. It's good and it goes in, but I'm just not sure if it will keep going in at the NHL level. Maybe I'm just really underrating it. It feels a little bit like Ryan Leonard last season where at the time I couldn't really see what made a shot special. It took a long while, a ton of games and watching basically all of his goals over and over again to come around it. So just like him, Captain is filling the net night after night but I can't tell you why really outside of positioning and the sheer quantity of high danger shots he takes. He's first on shot on net in the WHL for draft eligible players and he's tied for 8 all players included. So like I said, the one timer is good but outside of that he's a big fan of the toe drag release and while the puck doesn't seem to explode off of his stick, the release seems to fool goalies and it's really quick. So in the end he doesn't need an airport runway to release it. It's fast, it's precise, he hides his shooting intention very well, he changes the angle on his release point and he shoots from between the circle shift after shift. Those are enough qualities to score at the next level and once he had some strength, cause let's not forget that he's playing at under 170 pounds right now, it should add some pop to that already very good shot. So in conclusion. Berkeley Catton is an elite playmaker who's very competitive. He drives the middle of the ice to shoot the puck and send the puck in high danger areas to create his chances. He can play with pace or slow the game down. He's a very good skater who's also very competent defensively and very aggressive on the PK. He has the mind and the puck skills to make any play happen from the offensive blue line in. We haven't even talked about his transition game yet, but he's basically unstoppable in the neutral zone. I don't know. Who that short description make you think of but to me he has Mitch Marner written all over him. Just to make it clear this is stylistical comparison, I don't think it's fair to expect Catton to become a 100 point player and Marner in 2015 was just completely out of this world good but I could see him become like a low fat Marner type of player. So to me he's an obvious top 5 player in this draft and could very well end up being in the top 3 by the end of the season. He's that good. I'm telling you, people are blind. <laughs> Just joking. Uh, evaluating players is so subjective, but you might hear me talking about Cat in this season as much as you heard me talking about Crystal last season. Probably not as much because to this day Crystal is one of my all time favorite players to scout, but I like Catton quite a lot. So that's it boys and girls, again I hope you enjoy, thanks for watching, go subscribe now, <laughs> see you in the next one, peace.